Is a water heater from a box store actually different than the ones that you can buy at a professional plumbing supply store? In this video, we buy a water heater from a professional plumbing supply store, and then we buy one from a box store. We take them apart and we examine each piece side by side individually, and we even weigh them to see if there's actually any differences. We then put this whole matter to rest by hooking the water heaters together and then pumping enormous amounts of pressure into them until one of them pops. We headed to Kansas City Wind Nelson to grab the A.O. Smith Pro Grade Heater and we made sure to grab some barbecue while we were down there because you know we're in the Kansas City area and if you're in Kansas City we got awesome barbecue and then we left Kansas City Wind Nelson and we went to Lowe's home improvement store and got the box store version of the same heater it was a whole show in itself I wish we could have filmed it but Lowe's doesn't really like you filming in their store this was a pretty fun experiment it's an experiment that we wanted to do for quite some time we put them to the test and we see which one's actually better. All right, here we are with our two units. We've got the professional plumbing supply store unit over here on my right. And on my left, we have the box store unit. Now we did take extra care with these units to make sure we got the exact same brand. A.O. Smith, A.O. Smith. We made the decision to use A.O. Smith for this study. The main reason why is because A.O. Smith has water heaters in the pro grade line, but they also have water heaters in the box store line. There's actually only three manufacturers of tank type water heaters in the world. You've got A.O. Smith, you've got Bradford White, and you've got Rheem. All of those manufacturers make a line of water heaters for the professional plumbing supply stores. They also make many lines of water heaters for the box store units. A.O. Smith is one of the only ones that actually makes a professional grade A.O. Smith and then a box store A.O. Smith. We know that when you buy them from a box store, they're a little bit cheaper. In our case, I think it was about 120 bucks cheaper at the box store than it was at the professional plumbing store. The professional grade unit, $628.13 plus tax. The box store unit, $519, no cents, plus tax. Just from our years of experience in the field, we know there's differences. We know that the box store units fail faster. We know their components fail faster. And we know that we run into serviceability issues with those, and we don't necessarily run into them as often with the pro-grade units. Everybody on the internet likes to say, oh, it's a supply and demand thing, or it's because the box stores sell more, so they're cheaper, or whatever the case may be. And they all circle back to the one saying that you're gonna hear us say over and over in this video, they're the same heater. No, they're not. And we're gonna prove that in this video, but they are not the same heater. Even if this video goes nowhere and it doesn't change anybody's mind or change anybody's perspective, it's still worth it in, uh, internally within our plumbing company to know for sure the differences. We're gonna keep a log of all of the differences of these heaters. So we've got our pro grade heater and we've got our box store heater. The first test we're gonna put these through is we're gonna weigh them in the box before we take anything out of the box. Everyone on the internet likes to say they're the same water heater. So they should weigh the same inside the boxes. Like, I'm gonna have to hold it with my hands, but I'm not putting any weight up or down. I'm just, just balancing it. 130. Same thing with this one. 135.4. So right out of the gate, our pro grade unit weighs five pounds more than our box store unit. And we had an inkling of an indication of this. Our pro grade unit claims that this box weighs 150 pounds. So our box store unit claims it weighs 125. Those are rough claims. That's just to give the helpers an idea. Is this a box of styrofoam? Is there a water heater in it type of thing? One unit weighs a whole five pounds more than another. That's about three and a half to 4% heavier 
in weight. We started out by weighing the heaters in the boxes, and then we pulled them out of the boxes and weighed the heaters as a complete heater. The pro-grade units always give you these little foam things, which is silly. They're required to by the EPA for like efficiency reasons. And the logic is that they would go on the piping in and out of the unit. Here's the crazy part about it. It's against code to put these on there because you're not allowed to have combustibles within six inches of this flue and styrofoam is a combustible. Now we can start looking at these a little bit more. Now that they're out of the box, we can get some visual differences between the two. To help clarify what we're looking at throughout this whole thing, I'm actually gonna write on the front of these which is which. So this one here where it says commercial grade, this is the pro grade water heater. This one here where it's got a little bit fancier looking sticker and it says signature series or signature 100. This is our box store water heater. The claim is they're the same heater made on the same assembly line on the same day. They just slap different stickers on them and send one to the box stores and send the other to the professional plumbing supply stores. We can already tell that's not true. This one, we have a plastic drain valve, not a metal drain valve. This one, we have a metal drain valve. So obviously they're not the same heater made on the same assembly line on the same day and packaged and shipped differently. They are assembled different. Just on the surface, we can already notice some other cues as to the differences. The door that covers the burner assembly, this door is fairly flat, has a very pronounced curve on it, and then goes back to being fairly flat. This one comes away from the heater, has a less pronounced but larger curve, and then goes back to the heater. If they were the same units on the same assembly line at the same day, they wouldn't manufacture different access doors for the fronts of them, right? Another difference we can see. This temperature pressure relief valve has a yellow tag hanging on it that's kind of a warning label. This one does not. Obviously, those aren't the same parts either. They do the same thing, but they aren't the same part. This pressure relief valve is also substantially larger than the other one. Other very quick differences to note, these little pipes that come out of the top of a water heater, they're called nipples. These nipples come out far enough that you can actually see some flat pipe under the threads. These over here don't. There is no flat pipe underneath those threads. Again, it seems like we're splitting hairs and we're talking about some minor differences, but yet every single difference that we point out is just another feather in the hat to say they are not the same heater made on the same assembly lines on the same day and packaged differently. Let's weigh them now that they're out of the box. One twelve point eight with the pro grade unit. One twenty three point six. That's a big difference. Inside the packaging, there was five pounds of difference. Out of the packaging, we're ten and a half pounds different from one to the other. No packaging, no fluff, no filler, no nothing. Now, why would one water heater weigh 10 and a half pounds more than another water heater? They're both 40 gallon natural gas heaters. They're both A.O. Smith. One was bought at a box store. One was bought at a professional plumbing supply store. Hmm. I think we might start getting into some quality of materials differences between the two. We started pulling all the individual components off and examining the differences from one to the other, and we even weighed those, just because when you're dealing with metals, the weight of an object has to do with its strength and its structure, especially if they're supposed to be similar objects, right? We can pop our flue baffles off really quick. Pro-grade unit. 5.3 ounces, box store unit, flue baffle, 
also 5.3 ounces. So that's good, kind of. Some parts of these are going to be mass produced. Essentially, it's a stamped piece of metal that's cut out in a certain fashion. There's not a whole lot to the assembly of this, so I would really doubt that they retool a manufacturing plant just for the flu baffle. But also, we have 10 pounds of difference between the two heaters. Every individual piece that we weigh that doesn't add up to 10 pounds, that leaves us with the tank itself weighs 10 pounds lighter. In an effort for the tanks to even be fairly close to each other, we kind of need these parts to be weighing different amounts from each other. So we'll keep going here. Inside the unit, there's a big flue tube, a big metal tube that runs from the combustion chamber at the bottom out the top. Inside this unit, there's a baffle in here that is a bunch of twisted metal to help slow the flue gases down and push those gases against the wall of this flue tube, and it helps get more heat into the water, okay? So, there is the flue baffle on one of the units. There is the flue baffle on the other unit. And again, very similar to the flue collar that was up top, this is stamped metal, twisted up a little bit. There's not a whole lot to these, so I don't expect there to be a big weight difference from one to the other. All right, we're gonna have to get a little creative here. Let's just set this on there and let it balance in my hands here. Two pounds, three ounces. I'm not expecting these to be overly different from each other. Oh, they will be different. They're different lengths. So here's the box store unit. We're two pounds, two ounces. Something else to take note we have the baffles, the flue baffles, sitting right next to each other. And now we can start noticing quite a few differences. The pro grade baffle is longer by about four or five inches on the bottom. The longer this baffle is, the better it heats the water. The, the length of the baffle, every length of the baffle comes with a new twist in the baffle. And the more twists, the slower the flue gases rise up and out of the top, and the longer those flue gases can stay in the heater and put heat into the heater. Yet another way they sneak savings into these box store units, they're trimming down the baffle length between the two. Other things that we can note, on the box store unit, we have one, two, three, four, five, six rounded tabs and two squared tabs. Okay, on the pro grade unit, we really only have four rounded tabs and no squared ones. And we're only like three and a half ounces difference between the two, but again, it's yet another feather in the hat for the fact that these are not the same heaters manufactured on the same line and just boxed differently. This right here is a fairly notable difference the longer this baffle is, the better it heats the water. That means you're gonna get better water heating out of your pro grade unit. The nipples out of the top of these units and see if there's a difference just in those. They are definitely ruined coming out of here. Okay. And like I said, this has a long dip tube attached to the bottom of it. So for those that don't know, even though the cold water attaches in the top, it actually runs down this dip tube. Most of the water comes out the bottom of the tube. There are holes along the length of the tube so that as you're using water, cold water's coming into the heater, it's sending most of the water down to the bottom. These were definitely easier to get out on the box store unit. Hot nipple, notice a difference. This hot nipple does not have that short little tube coming out the bottom of it like the pro-grade unit has. So 
here's our cold again. Same thing, the cold will have a dip tube on it to get the cold water down to the bottom. And at first glance, this dip tube appears to be the same. You can see a stark difference on the hots just, just between the two units. This is the box store unit. Notice the gray film on there, the gray sealant that's on there. You're seeing the gray sealant here on this box store unit. So this is, these two are the box store units and these two are the pro grade units. So hot for hot, the pro grade has the little dip tube, the box store does not. Cold for cold, we do look to be incredibly similar. Both of them together on the pro grade unit. And we're 9.9 .9 ounces. And then we're gonna go both of them together on the box store unit and we're 9.7 ounces. That one's pretty obvious because the pro grade unit has that little extra dip tube on the hot nipple. And so you would expect it to weigh a little bit more. One thing that I, a, I do like seeing, even on the box store units, these nipples are what's called dielectric nipples. And there's a phenomenon that happens in plumbing. When you connect two dissimilar metals together, you create a condition called electrolysis. And that's basically where the two metals start fighting against each other. Years ago in the code book, we were required to use dielectric unions when we installed water heaters. Well, then they actually came out with dielectric nipples. And as they've come out with these nipples, they are sleeved with a piece of plastic on the inside, and that breaks that electrolysis connection so that we don't get that corrosion that can come from electrolysis. On our way down is the temperature pressure relief valves. So what this valve is for, if this water heater gets too much temperature or too much pressure, this valve opens and starts dumping water on the ground. If it's too much pressure, it'll slowly seep in dribble water. If it's too much temperature, the spring inside here com collapses completely, and it's a solid beam of water that goes down on the ground. This valve here to the water heater is very similar to like the airbag in your car. When this valve opens up, it saves you from like catastrophic failure. This valve's really, really important. All right, pro grade one out. The box door one we can already see is visibly smaller. Now there's still three quarter inch pipe threads, but we can just tell by the thickness of the brass that one is considerably smaller than the other. So here we are, the box door unit, the pro grade unit. We don't even need to label these, like we can totally tell the difference. There are also different manufacturers between the two. This one is made by Cash Acme. And this one is made by Watts. So there is the manufacturer Cash Acme. And then this one, see the word Watts on there. This one, the pro grade unit is rated for 105,000 BTUs. The box store unit is also rated for 105,000 BTUs. So they have the same ratings. Let's go weigh them and see if there's any difference there. Pro grade unit, 9.1 ounces. Box store unit, nine ounces. It's not much. Even an ounce difference in there indicates more inferiority with the box store unit. When it comes to metal, weight equals strength. And so that's why we're weighing these is because if they weigh less, they're gonna be less strong. I can speak from personal experience. I've gone to box store units where this valve needed to be replaced. I put my wrench on it and go to turn it. And through all the heat cycles of everything, the brass cracks and leaves us with a broken off piece inside the heater. That gets very expensive to fix after a while. So yet again, another piece where we found some significant differences from pro grade to box store. So let's pull these drain valves off real fast. There is the professional grade drain valve. You see it's three quarter, it's brass, and it has a full port ball valve in it. Let me grab a screwdriver and I'll show you. You open this up, 
and you can see straight through the unit. You can see my hand behind it. Let's say we have to drain or flush this unit over the years. I can open this up and I can stick a tool clean through the center of it to stir up the debris that likes to get stuck behind there. All that nasty debris that gets in your heater. A perk of the pro grade unit is serviceability. These plastic drain valves like to break before you can even get them out. All right. There's your box store unit drain valve. You open it with a screwdriver here, but once that's open, there is no way to get a tool from here through the unit. You don't have a straight shot. So draining a box store heater is one of the most frustrating things to do. You pretty much have to remove the drain plug. But the problem is by the time this thing's old enough to have sediment in it that you need to drain it, this guy gets so brittle that when you go to take it out, it just snaps. Obviously, we know what's gonna happen here. One of these is plastic, one of them's metal. But keeping up with the theme of things, we're gonna go weigh these two. Pro grade drain valve, 5.6 ounces. Box store drain valve, 2.4 ounces. Obviously, we could expect that one because we got plastic versus metal. But yet again, another difference of the heaters. Keep in mind, Everyone says they're the same heater manufactured on the same assembly line on the same day. They just put different stickers on them, put them in different boxes and send them out. Obviously they don't. Here's the two covers that we were talking about earlier in the video. This one's a lot flimsier than this one. Like, that feels like a seven squishy. Oh, that's definitely better. I don't know. <laughs> they hold different shapes. They do the same thing. They both protect the lower controls and, and, and the wires and everything else, but they're manufactured different. So they're, they're obviously not manufactured on the same supply line, same assembly line on the same day. These are different pieces. Pro grade cover, 7.8 ounces. Box store cover. 6.2 ounces. So on something as silly as a control cover that just protects your controls, they went with significantly inferior metal, thinner, flump, flimsier metal. Literally every step of the way, except for the draft hood, every single piece we've taken off of this thing so far is different. Now we're gonna pull out the burner assembly and inspect it for differences. The burner assembly is held in by quite a few things. We have these wires that go into that burner assembly. We have this wire that goes in there. This actually runs your starter, your little, ah, <laughs> it shocked me. Your, your little starter here, let me see if I can get it, see it, see the spark jump in there. You have to have that in order to light it, right? This small tube is called your pilot tube. Pilot tube disconnected, and then our main burner tube. We'll pull our burner assembly out of the bottom of the unit. All right. And here's the burner assembly for the ProGrade unit. They don't look to be too different, but I've already spotted one difference that's pretty major between the two. If you look here on this burner assembly, we have no holes. It's got a 22 stamped into it. There's no holes anywhere. But over on this burner assembly, we still have a 22 stamped in it, but we have like this hole that's, that goes clean through it. Like you can see my finger through the other side of it. Does that make an overall big difference? I don't know. I mean, for every 100 of the pro grade units, maybe one has that hole, one doesn't. I don't know. We don't typically run into burner assembly issues with the box store units. So I don't expect there to be significant differences with these. I don't really know what that rivet's for on there. It's, I mean, understanding what I understand about how these things work, that does not have any effect on how it performs. It could just be a manufacturing difference. Again, I really expect these, these burner assemblies to be fairly similar, but we're gonna find out. Pro grade unit, weight, 
We are two pounds, 1.1 ounces. On the box store unit, we are two pounds, 1.1 ounces. As we kind of expected, these are very similar from one unit to the other. I mean, I could easily understand the argument that these are all manufactured in the same facility and then shipped to the water heater assembly facility. And it's the same burner assembly, no matter box store or pro grade. I can buy that. The easiest way to remove a control valve is to stick a short piece of black iron pipe in there. I usually use a longer one, but I don't have a longer one. So I'm gonna make a longer one. I'm gonna stick a piece of black iron in there and then I'm gonna use a screwdriver as a cheater wrench and we're just gonna turn it. And once you get it started, they come out pretty easy. Pro-grade. On the back of the pro-grade unit, they have this metal cap on the end of it. They used to not have this metal cap on the back of the box store units. I'm not as much in the field as I used to be, but back when I was in the field all the time, I went to like 10 control valve failures in a row where the units all originated from a box store. If the unit's at a box store, it'll tell you do not return water heater to the place of purchase because Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, they don't want your old water heater. As I'm showing up in a home on a water heater, I can very quickly look for this sticker and see did this unit come from a box store or did it come from a professional plumbing supply store? Once you've been doing this for years and years and years, you can just tell by the front. As, as to where it came from. But ultimately what I'm getting at is these control valves used to be significantly different. They had the same shell on the outside. They would make you think they were the same control valve, but they were missing that metal cap on the end. What would happen, this metal cap covers a plastic end and the heat would trash the plastic end and the plastic end would crack. And then it would get water down inside the control valve and ruin the control valve. After like 10 of those in a row, I called the rep that makes these control valves. And I, I asked him point blank, do you guys make different control valves for the box store water heaters? And they said they absolutely do. They said there were four key differences between one and the other. One of them was that metal cap. Three of them were the quality of metal materials on the inside of the control valve. So let's pull this one off and see if it has that metal cap or not. Hey, it does have the metal cap. It's possible they're the same control valve. It very, very, very seriously is possible for that. I knew back then when I was asking the manufacturer, are they really that different? Because these control valves were failing like crazy, but only on the box store units. And so I knew it was only a matter of time before the manufacturers had to start improving the quality of even their box store control valves simply because they were failing left and right and they were having to replace them all the time and they're under warranty so they're having to pay for them and everything else. Pro grade control valve. One pound, 12.1 ounces. Box store control valve with our gray sealant on there. One pound, 11.8 ounces. We're 0.3 ounces different from one to the other. Again, it doesn't seem like much, but every little bit makes a huge difference with these things. Visually, they look the same. Internally, there's going to be differences on there. Based off of my experience with these control valves failing, their arch nemesis not having that metal cap. So it's highly possible they left all the other inferior pieces of metal in these control valves, and they just started putting the metal caps on the end to help protect that end from the heat, and that way they don't start cracking and leaking. Yet another difference between these two heaters. There is one last piece that we're gonna take out of these heaters and examine the differences between them, and that piece is called the anode rod. The anode rod is a sacrificial piece of metal that's screwed into the top of the water heater that runs down inside the tank. It's made of a very weak piece of metal so that electrolysis will attack it first before it tries to attack 
the metal tank of the heater. Every water heater has one. They make them in several different varieties. You have an aluminum anode rod, or you have a magnesium anode rod. The magnesium anode rod is a little bit better than the aluminum anode rod. They're gonna be a little bit more expensive, but they're gonna protect better against corrosion. In my experience with plumbing here in the Midwest of the US, magnesium anode rods are better, and then you would only use an aluminum anode rod if you were getting a funny smell in your water. The aluminum anode rods can help get rid of that smell. The anode rods are screwed into the top of the tank through this black collar up here. They're very difficult to get out, so we're actually, I'm gonna show you actually how to get one out. What I like to do is if we have a tank with no water lines hooked to it, I'm gonna take shorter nipples here. We're gonna screw them into the top of the tank. We don't need thread sealant or anything else. These are just more for positioning than anything. We bring out the big guns. That son of a gun was in there. Now it's like stuck in the socket. They're not always like that. And I'm not gonna try to act like that's a difference from like box store to pro grade. Sometimes these things are just a freaking bear to get out of there. They get really bad after the water heater's been installed for many years and you're going to replace the anode rod. They get real bad. Okay, let's clean these up and then we're going to analyze the differences between them. Let me grab a rag. We've got our other one sitting there on the ground and we'll analyze the differences. Just like all the other parts we've taken out of the box store unit, this one is covered in gray thread sealant and it just gets everywhere. You get it on one finger and next thing you know, it's on your elbows and it's on your ear. You're eating dinner three days later and you find it somewhere else. Like it's just, it just gets everywhere. So, okay, so here is the box store unit and here is the pro grade unit. And we can already tell some pretty significant differences just in the anode rod. Keep in mind, what is the anode rod's job? It is to protect the metal tank from corroding. Anytime we have a body of water, we're gonna have electrolysis, we're gonna have corrosion. And so we have a sacrificial anode rod to protect the unit from corroding. They appear to be similar lengths. The pro-grade anode rod is wider than the box store anode rod. If you look near the top, they start out at the same width, but then this one gets reduced really hard. If you look at the tops of these, the pro grade one has a weld spot on the top of it. That weld spot indicates that the pro grade unit is a magnesium anode rod and the box store unit is an aluminum anode rod. You can tell just by sticking your finger down there and feeling for that weld spot you can tell before you ever pull them out what's what. A magnesium anode rod is gonna be a better anode rod than an aluminum anode rod. As professional plumbers, the only time we wanna use an aluminum anode rod is going to be if the customer is getting a lot of foul smelling water, smells like rotten eggs in the water, then we need to swap out the magnesium anode rod for an aluminum anode rod. That does not happen very often. It's gonna be regionally if it does happen at all. Here in the Midwest, I think I've had to do that swap maybe four or five times over 20 plus years. And they're usually gonna be out in a rural area where somebody is on a well and they're having some unknown minerals come in and affect their water quality. So we would pull out the magnesium and put in the aluminum. But aside from that, that's a pretty big difference from box store unit to pro grade unit is just the anode rod. Let's go weigh them. This is the pro grade anode rod. One pound, 2.9 ounces. And then this is the box store anode rod. One pound, six ounces. So the box store one actually weighs a little bit more we know they're different metals. So they're gonna have different densities and they're gonna weigh different amounts. That doesn't surprise me that these weigh different of each other and it doesn't surprise me that one weighs more than the other, particularly the box store one, because they are two different metals. However, in the anode rod comparison, it's more the, the type of material than the weight. 
Everything else that we're weighing, we're weighing because the weight of the material indicates quality. The heavier the material, the, the more robust the construction. Anode rods are gonna be a little bit different because these things are designed to disappear in about six to nine years. They literally wear down to a nub and it's nothing but a wire core that's left in there. We've got one other thing to do with these tanks before we really put them to the test. Let's go weigh the empty tanks, no attachments on them, nothing on them whatsoever. Let's go weigh them now and now it's just tank for tank, no accessories. Box, store, tank, 103.6. Now let's go measure the pro-grade unit. 112.8. So that's a significant difference. We got nine pounds of difference there on water heaters that are supposed to be the same heater. Remember the classic line. It's the same heater from the same assembly line made on the same day. They just put different boxes on them and different stickers and send them out. Obviously not. There's nothing left in those heaters other than tank, insulation, and jacket. And they weigh nine pounds difference between the two. Nine pounds may not sound like much, but when we're only starting at 100 pounds, that's like seven or eight percent difference in just the weight alone. That's huge. And so that indicates the pro-grade unit is going to have a much more robust construction. It's going to be a better unit. It's gonna, it's gonna have a better longevity. It's going to hold pressure over the years longer and everything else. You know, we left all the parts on display so everybody on the plumbing team can see the exact differences. They could pick it up, they could feel, they could shake, they could flex, they could, they could hold the hands in their hands, the differences between the two. And they're surprised as they see it, you know, and it's some of the differences you, you think they're different out in the field, but since you can't compare them side by side, you just don't know. Being able to hold them side by side, you're like, wow, that is totally different, you know? All of this means nothing if it doesn't actually hold the pressure, if it isn't actually more robust. So now for phase two of this video, we're gonna pipe these things together. We're gonna fill them with water, and then we're gonna use compressed air to increase the pressure in the tank to the point where one of them explodes. We were gonna tie them both together so they're both equal pressure. One of them is going to pop first, and we're gonna see which one's the winner. You know, about a year, year and a half ago, we tried blowing up an electric water heater like they did in Mythbusters. And we learned very quickly, they don't make water heaters like they used to because we tried with two different heaters a year and a half ago and we could not get one to blow up and leave the ground. So I've got our gauge here on the tank set to about 100 PSI. And here on our gauges, we're, we're fairly close. This shows 94 PSI. The moment I open this valve, we now are putting air Whatever pressure is in the air system is now in these tanks. One of the things we talked about when we were kind of setting up and discussing everything that we wanted to do with this video, let's drill holes in the side. Let's cut holes in the side of this thing and examine what the inside looks like after we do all this. And we opted not to do that the day of. And the main reason why was because it's very difficult to get to the inside of the tank in a way that doesn't damage the inside of the tank. The tanks are rated for like 300 pounds of pressure. The temperature pressure relief valves in those tanks would start dumping at 150. So let's go ahead and crank it up to 150. We know they can handle that. We knew we were being safe by filling these with water and then adding air pressure to them because water doesn't compress. And so if you take a big tank, a 40 gallon tank, and you, comp you fill it with compressed air to 400 pounds of pressure and you've got like a bomb. But water, since it doesn't compress, there's nothing really to like explode, right? It's just going to swell and crack and break things, but it's not going to like blow up necessarily. I can hear things making noise over there. That's kind of funny. However, when you're standing 12 feet away from a water or a pair of water heaters with 400 pounds of pressure in it, it gets a little nerve wracking. Like you're hoping that all of your intuitions are correct in that moment. There's 250. I have a feeling these are gonna pop somewhere around 350. 
and I'm having to stand there and turn the regulator up and add more pressure and add more pressure and the units start working and walking and moving because the metal is distorting so bad and you're just like waiting for something bad to happen. There is three, boom! One of them did, we right at 350 pounds of pressure. One of them's making a whole bunch of noise. I don't know which one it is. None of them are leaking yet. Whoa, look at the nipples on the top of the pro grade one. The nipples on the top are moving. The box store one seems to be holding strong. Now look at the nipples on the box store one. They're folding in really hard. There's 375, 380. I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna do. The nipples on the box store unit definitely are moved a lot farther than the pro grade unit. There's 400 pounds of pressure in those tanks right now. That is insane. We gotta put this on pause for a minute. We have to change bottles. We're out of nitrogen in here. We're at 381 in our tanks. There's 400, there's 407, 408, 410. Oh, you see the box store one moving. It's starting to tip over. And there's water running out of the top of the box store one right now. There's 420 pounds of pressure, 425, 430. We're putting in 450. It's, it looks like we have 406 in the tanks. This gauge has two, oh, boom! The pro-grade heater just let go. Thankfully, nothing bad happened. It went about like we thought it would. On this channel, we've now blown up or, or ruined four water heaters just for videos. So that's kind of, that's kind of fun. Wow! Neither one of them fared very well at all. So, that thing is gonna spray and spray and spray. If you have any questions as to how much pressure was in there, we just shot water all the way across the parking lot. And we don't even have, this isn't a pressure washer or anything. It's just some tanks that we put together. This is the pro grade unit. We have completely ruined and distorted everything inside this unit. These started out looking straight up. Now they're bent and pulled over. They actually ripped into the metal as they were bending over. The flue connection is like this far now down inside the heater. And the reason that does that is on the bottom of the heater, there's a dome that's the combustion chamber. And as we start over pressurizing everything, and we'll get shots of this in a second, that dome starts to flip. And as that dome flips, it pulls the top of the heater down from here because there's a tube inside that connects everything together. The jacket and everything is fine. It just folded everything in on the top. This is actually, we see similar conditions to this in the wild all the time. And what happens is as pressure and thermal expansion are happening, it'll actually cause leaks on the water lines above before the tank actually explodes. Technically, the box store unit failed first. At that moment, we could have called the test off, but we wanted to keep going and keep going until we had like pressure escaping the tanks at a rate faster than we could add air into the tanks. Now we come over to the box store heater and this one's not good. I mean, it ripped the jacket open on the back of it from so much swelling and, and contortion and everything. Same thing up top. It moved all of these around up top, sunk these down in and everything. The fronts of the heater look to be okay. We'll pull all these apart and we'll examine, like we'll be able to split, lay them on their backs and we'll examine the underneath side of them too. But all in all, this one let go first, but this one's scarier. With the back jacket flipped open like that, I'm really curious to see what's going on inside this jacket, even though this one popped first. We kind of got caught up in the moment as all of that stuff was going on. 
as we're airing them up, water started coming out of the top of the box store unit first. <laughs> Holy cow. The whole bottom of that, that dome started out like an arch and now it's flipped around the complete opposite direction. That is insane. Both of them are very, very similar. You can see how warped it is in there. That thing is ruined. And then over into this one. We saw them start moving and rocking and leaning all on their own. And it's because the tanks were getting so distorted in their shape. Like this access door used to be lined up with this opening in the jacket, and now it's not. And it's because everything's in the way. So there's, that's the bottom combustion chamber. Now you get a real good view into the bottom of the tank and see how flipped over that is. That, that is just immense. That is crazy. Let's, let's pull apart the other one and see. You see some really distorted metal underneath there. That is crazy. If anybody wants a discounted water heater, I've got two of them I'll sell for real cheap. Worked perfectly. Ran when parked, right? Classic Facebook marketplace. Come on. There we go. This insulation's got like a gluing property to it. There we go. Trash man's gonna love us today. Some of you guys might not know that this is just a decorative jacket on the water heater. This flimsy metal isn't your actual tank. Now, how will we know which one's which? Do you think I could return this to Lowe's? I bought the extended warranty. I should totally try to do that. That's gonna come off in nice, decent chunks. So this thing, it just swelled enough to pop the jacket and push all the insulation out. I'm not seeing anything too alarming there. I mean, you can totally see it down here at the bottom, how much this metal swelled. That's what we want to see. The top of that water heater looks nothing like a water heater should. So what we can see is the top of this used to be flush and level. The top used to be considerably higher. And then as the pressure builds and the bottom is trying to give out, it actually pulls the top down, which makes your water line connections, makes your water line connections lean into each other. And so we can always tell as plumbers when we show up to a house that they've seen high water pressure recently because the water lines on the heater will be all flexed pushing into each other. So it's a classic sign of thermal expansion. This one's got the same thing. They stick a foam ring around the tank to stop their expand a foam, I guess. They, they're only expand a foam on the top and then they have the fiberglass insulation on the bottom. That's pretty wild. This insulation doesn't look like it's gonna come off as easy as the other one did. So if you're ever disassembling a water heater to this level, 
It's easier if you use the cheap one because the cheap one swells and pops all this insulation off for you and makes it a lot easier to pull all this stuff off. So this is ultimately what I was looking for here. This is the weld seam from the top to the bottom. This is what I was expecting to have failed and it doesn't look like it failed anywhere except for right here. There's where it was. As we later learned, the box store unit was swelling sideways and vertically, while the prograde unit did not swell sideways at all. It only blew out the top and blew out the bottom, and then it eventually cracked a weld. And the weld on the prograde tank, right where it cracked, it cracked right at the intersection from where the tank, you know, the tank starts out as a flat piece of metal, and then it's rolled and welded into a tube, and then they put the top and the bottom caps on it. That crack right there, is where it finally popped and let go. That bottom weld joint right on the bottom. You can see bubbles appear and then go away as I rub over it. That is what we were looking for by taking all this insulation off. So we don't have to take any more insulation off. Basically where all the stress is being put on that tank as that bottom dome is flipping inside out, it basically cracked that weld there. Keep in mind, we had over 400 pounds of pressure in these tanks, so we're well over the rating of the tanks. Uh, for both of them, box store and prograde, it took over 400 pounds to get one of them to leak. So again, on the top of this one, very similar as the other one. As the bottom dome starts to flip and invert, it pulls the flue tube down and makes everything fold in. This is, I left the nipples in on this one, this is what happens to water lines on a water heater that does not have a thermal expansion tank. Which, by the way, if you're questioning whether you need a thermal expansion tank, this proves it. But we also have a really badass video for everything that happens inside a thermal expansion tank and everything else. So if you click in the upper corner of the screen, you'll see a little card there where you can watch that video too if you want. What we were trying to do is we were trying to speed up years and years of use in a matter of minutes. Box store unit swells and swells and swells, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it actually got big enough that it broke all of the foam insulation off of the outer side of the tank, and then it popped the jacket open on the tank. Just as the styrofoam popped off the outside of the tank, one of the things that we didn't even talk about the day we shot this in our shop Water heaters are lined with glass on the inside. And it's a raw steel tank. And then they, they line the inside of that tank with glass to preserve the tank from corrosion. Well, steel is flexible. Steel, you put it under enough stress, it'll bend, it'll move, it'll fold, it'll stretch, it'll swell, it'll do all those things. Glass is not flexible. Zero flexibility in glass whatsoever. As the box store tank, is swelling, it's breaking its own glass lining on the inside. That tells us why we see so many box store water heaters that are failed and leaking anywhere between the, let's call it five to seven year mark. They're designed really well. They have a six year tank warranty and they're designed really well to last like right at the six years. And that would explain why box store units, when they fail, it, it's a tank failure. They, they've made with such thin steel that they swelled and they lost their corrosion protection because the glass has popped off on the inside and then the tank just rots out. And meanwhile, our pro-grade tanks, they don't swell like that. Granted, you put 400 pounds of pressure in them and yeah, they are gonna start moving and twisting on the tops and bottoms, but the side walls of the tank did not start swelling or anything else. And so the glass lining stays very good and very well intact inside there. And so a lot of times when we see a box store water heater in need of a replacement, it's a failed tank. It's because it's leaking on the ground. A lot of times when we see a pro grade water heater in need of a replacement, oftentimes it's a component that needs replaced but the, the unit is so old, maybe it's 12 or 15 years old. And so it's like two to three times it's warrantied life. Usually the customer at that point, they don't wanna choose to sink money into replacing a component on a 15 year old heater. And so they go ahead and replace 
the heater just from an economic standpoint, not because the heater needed replaced, right? Whereas on the box store units, once the tank starts leaking, you can't fix that. You have to replace the tank. It was really cool to watch that. As the, the box store unit swelled and it popped the insulation off, the insulation was very easy to peel off of there. Whereas on the pro grade unit, because the tank didn't swell like that, we had a very difficult time getting the insulation off the pro grade tank. And it's because it, it didn't move enough to break that seal. The same thing happens on the glass lining on the inside. This tank held much stronger and then broke in an instant. That tank was swelling and swelling and swelling and it was going to pop and explode. So officially the pro grade tank failed first, but in my years of experience, after we've pulled these apart and seen how this tank is not swelled at all, the, the weld gave out. I would much rather that happen than this one that's just swelling and swelling like a time bomb. And, and we knew that because the jacket on this one was split. Like that thing was getting ready to just explode, whereas this one sprung a really heavy leak. Unbiased opinion whatsoever, I don't really care. I don't have any allegiance to one or the other. We do plenty of water heaters regardless of either way, but I'm really glad that we took the time to do this because now I know a box store water heater, when it does pop, it's gonna be, it's gonna be treacherous whereas this water heater here is just gonna spring a leak. We could have drilled holes in there, we could have cut them with a hot saw and cut it with a sawzall or reciprocating saw or something like that. But after the water heaters have been through that much pressure and essentially failed on their own, the vibration of a sawzall could make all the glass on the inside fall off. What are you really seeing at that? You're not really seeing a notable thing. And so we opted to not examine any of that. Thinking about it now, we could have gotten like a bore scope, a really small camera with a movable end, and we could have stuck it into one of the holes and tried to examine and see what we could see with that, maybe. But we saw everything we needed to see from the outside. The moment that tank changes shape and it swells, the glass lining is now compromised and that tank will not have near the lifespan that any other tank did. I can't remember in the video is it exactly what pressure the jacket popped open on that one, but at whatever pressure that was, at that moment and probably pressures before that point, that tank was compromised enough to where it was never going to last near as long as it should. And, and keep in mind, because glass is not flexible, it just takes the most minor of movement of that steel and now the glass is separated from the steel and the glass is cracked and you've got water getting behind the glass. All right, so now we have the two side by side again here. This was the pro grade unit. This was the box store unit. And one of the things that I wanna to try to showcase here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on film very well or not. The box store unit, this tank is like bowed out. It's like egg shaped. Whereas the pro grade unit re retained all of its structure it just popped a weld at the bottom. And keep in mind, we had over 400 pounds of pressure inside these things. So as a professional, and I've, I've seen popped water heaters in houses before, I would prefer a weld snap over the swelling that I'm seeing here. Yes, this tank may have held a little bit more pressure, but when this tank went, it was gonna be a very dangerous situation when this tank popped versus this tank. I mean, ultimately they're, they're supposed to trip the pressure relief valve at 150 PSI. And, you know, we had, you know, over twice that in there, uh, almost three times that in there. And so we were well outside of the design capacities, but the swelling of this tank would have me very, very concerned if I were, if, if this tank was in my house and, and something catastrophic happened, to result into that. But hopefully you can see how straight this one is and how curved that one is. The big indicator that we were really kind of onto something different, the first one would be 
the flu baffle, that twisted piece of metal that runs up the flu. Seeing the differences in something as simple as a flu baffle, something that can easily be mass produced, I can't imagine they're saving much money by having the box store flu baffle be that much shorter, but they are. You know, the, the, it's six or eight inches shorter, and the shorter that flu baffle is, the lower efficiency that you're gonna see out of the water heater. That was kind of surprising to see. The other big surprise was the weight of the tanks. Seeing the nine to 10 pounds of difference from a box store tank to a pro grade tank gave us a window into the idea that the box store tank is built with thicker steel that's, that weighs more. I mean, we're only talking like 120 pounds. Nine pounds different in 120 pounds, that's like eight or 9% different. That's, that's eight or 9% more steel that's in the pro grade tank. All in all, it was a really cool experiment. We did exactly what we set out to do, and that was to examine the differences between the two. And yeah, we're gonna get a lot of things in the comments about like, oh, this was biased because we're professional plumbers, and of course we hate the box store units. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I can choose to buy all of our, like we buy a lot of water heaters every year. I could easily buy them from Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards, I totally could. I would save money on the front end doing that. About $100 a water heater, and with as many water heaters as we replace, that's a substantial savings. And I'll also add that Home Depot is like a thousand yards from our shop. And our professional plumbing supply store that we like to use is like 10 miles from our shop. Not only do we spend extra money for the pro grade units, but we have to go way out of our way to get them. And the reason why is because we know our name is attached to that unit and we know that six or eight years down the road, if you paid for a water heater from us and that water heater's failed in six years, you're not gonna accept the excuse of the fact that it was an inferior water heater and it's not really our fault. We're the ones who picked it for you. And so that's why we pick the pro grade units because we see the best success with them. We've been in business for four years now and we've never had to replace a water heater under warranty using the pro grade heaters. And I've seen many, many, we've gone to many customers' homes where they've bought block store units and the unit's 18 months, two years old and it's already leaking out the tank. It's a thing that happens more often with the box store units and now we know why. There's nine pounds less steel in the construction of that unit. That alone tells you everything you need to know.